Hi, I'm Sean, and welcome to the Love to Own Your Business podcast. Here we learn how to grow businesses we love to own. Each month, we share great advice on how to do that, and also on how to avoid the pitfalls that make us love our business not so much. For the past two years, business owners and workforce alike have been facing incredible challenges to their livelihoods. It has likely been the greatest period of uncertainty that anyone in the broad overlap of generations that I travel through in daily life have ever experienced. Although there finally appears to be a light at the end of the tunnel, long COVID should probably be now applied to not just the physical symptoms that continue to linger on, but also the symptoms of anxiety from transition into the post-pandemic world. For the anxieties related to what your business needs, our communities are plentiful with business coaches. But many of the changes that our businesses now need are coming hand in hand with the changes that our souls need also. If you're currently struggling with the changes that your business needs because the struggle is coming from your soul, then you should consider spending some time with a life coach. To help us understand the benefits of each, today's guest can help. With us this month is Lynn Tranchell, an award-winning certified life mastery consultant and the proprietor of Clear Ahead. For close to nine years, Lynn has dedicated her time to helping people achieve harmony between success, their values, and core beliefs. Today, we'll be talking about what it means to have full spectrum wealth and how a life coach can provide valuable insights for coordinating the success of your soul with the success of your business and also the other way around. So hi, Lynn. How are you? Hello, I'm doing great. How are you? Great. Thank you very much for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, why don't we start off by give us a little bit of background of how you came to become a life, a life coach and clear head. Yeah, so I started... Um taking classes at church. And then I started teaching classes and I really loved it hmm. when people got it, you know, when that light bulb goes off and people start seeing things differently and doing things differently. Yes. So then I went out looking for another way to, to do it. And that's how I found uh, life coaching. Business coaches are generally keyed into solving business problems with numbers or systems and plans, right? But Frequently, there's a lot of life changes that need to be resolved for a business pl- for a business success to happen. Um, so, can you help us understand where does one begin and one end? Where does business coaching end or life coaching begins, and how do they sort of work together? Yeah, I think there is an overlap. What I do is I help people create full spectrum wealth. So you have a wealth in all areas of your life. You can't be bankrupt in one area and rich in another. They all sign up bleed together. So I help you create a vision in your health, relationships, your vocation, and then the amount of time and money freedom you want in your life. And where the overlap occurs is in the business part of your vision, because you have a vision of what you want your business to look like and to be like. There are are the things that you were taught when you were younger And those just show up out of the blue. You have no idea where they came from even. And those are the kinds of things that a life coach can help you with so that you do fully participate in your business at the level you want to. What are some of the most common ones, like like from a business perspective, like the things that I sort of like to, um, I guess we most frequently come across as sort of the release of control, right? So how do we now trust others? How do we sort of instill the trust in ourselves to be able to um, be able to delegate? Like that might be one, right? What are the other kinds of stresses that you, uh, that you see? Yeah. One of the big ones I see is what's called the Lone Ranger syndrome thinking, like you said, you have to do it yourself and nobody can do it as well as I can do it. So I have to do it all. And that just leads to burnout. It leads to you trying to do too much, which means you don't do the right things. So everybody has areas of their their life where they, you might call it a zone of excellence Mm. or a zone of genius where you're really, really good at it. And it's easy for you. And very often as business owners, we feel as though we have to do everything. So we're doing the day-to-day, whatever, and it's we're not good at it, which means we don't do it well. It takes longer and it, it just makes it more difficult for us. We're, is if, we're, if we allow ourselves to hire somebody to do that, maybe a subcontractor that is excellent at that. For example, one of the things that I'm looking at is having somebody do my social media for me. 
um, because the social media stuff changes so often. I want to concentrate on coaching, uh, not on the different changes that are going on in LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and all of that other stuff. So that's not my zone of excellence. And I'd much rather have somebody who is good at it do it because they do it better. Yeah. Yeah. You have to accept that we're not great at things. It's sort of like looking at ourselves in the mirror and going, yep, I'm really good at this and being confident in what I'm good at and also being confident to give up what we can't. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So COVID big changes over the past two years, business is changing left and right as we see it. Um, are you getting a lot of people having difficulties transitioning, now re-examining what's important in life and then then taking that back and how to shape their businesses? Yeah, there is, actually, I read this, I don't know what the exact statistic is, but there are more people starting businesses now than ever before yeah. because they discovered that working outside of the, the corporate world was more fun. They could they could uh, schedule their own time. They can do what they wanted to do. And people are starting those up left and right. I recently came across this uh, concept, uh, post-traumatic growth. Uh, it, you very, very often hear of post-traumatic stress, yeah. but there's also when you are in this trauma, you can either allow it to propel you forward or to keep you where you are. And I think a lot of people are going after that, that growth, seeing things differently. Right. Um, it's true. What, uh, what kind of um, advice do you give to somebody going through this growth period? What is their, what are the top things that you, let's say the top three priorities they should be examining? Well, first of all, the having the vision of the life you would love and the business. So the vision of your life in those main areas, and it's really based on what you would love, not what do you think you can do, not what does the economy say I can do my education, but really what you would love. And then what you want to do is become that person, step into being that person, um, I'm sure that many of your viewers have heard of the law of attraction. You attract what you affirm. Yeah. But that's really the secondary law. The primary law is the law of vibration. So you want to be in the vibration of that person. You want to um, assume the wish fulfilled, so to speak. Mm. So if this is who I am, what would I do this morning? Well, how would I walk out the door? What kind of books would I read? What kind of TV shows would I read? Who would I interact with? How would I interact with people? So it's being in that vibration of the end result and then taking action from there. And action is really the key. Nothing happens without action. Yes. It's just like uh, electricity. Electricity doesn't work without a ground wire. Action is the ground wire. One of the things that you can do, one of the things I have people do is to, in fact, I have a meditation called how to be a success magnet. Yeah. And what you do is you make a list of all of your successes that you've had. And when I was in the corporate world, I had a kudos folder. When somebody sent me an email saying, good job, I would shove it into my kudos folder. And when I was feeling down, I would look at all of those Mm -hmm. email saying, good job. So you make a list of all of your successes. And when you're writing them down, you want to feel what it felt like to have that success. Yes. And then get into that place. If you have some big project going on, some big presentation, look at those successes and get into the feeling of those successes. And then you see things differently. Yes. Um, are there kinds of scripts that you like to sort of instill in people? Um, like how do you reframe their thoughts, right? Because life coaching is, I think it's like business coaching. It's, it's, it's about a series of processes, but mm -hmm. I think life coaching is more about a series of scripts that we have in our head that we sort of repeat at certain times. Like how do we identify what script to use maybe in, um, one element of, 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 of a challenge or in dealing with something that's business related. Um, do you have examples of like, like what kind of scripts you might use? I don't know if it's scripts per se. One of the things that I have my clients do is um, what's called the air method, which is helping them to reframe their paradigms. Your paradigms are just your typical thought patterns. 
So your thought habits. So when you just pay attention and it's A-I-R-R, -R, the first one is awareness. So just notice when you're having those thoughts that are keeping you from moving forward. And then the I stands for interrupt. You want to interrupt it, say up until now, or a part of me feels this way. And that kind of um, stops the, the paradigm, the thought uh, habits from continuing and taking hold. And then you release those thoughts um, and then you replace them with what you want. Again, based on where you wanna go, what would be something that you could think of that will support you in getting there? And then the last piece is action. Again, everything, everything is action. So you wanna get into the thoughts, the feelings, and then take action based on those. And when, you, when your thoughts, feelings, and actions are all aligned, that's when you have the best results. What, uh, let, let's flip up the questions a little bit a second. So if I'm an employer and I'm, and I'm experiencing a lot of turnover in my, in my workforce because their souls are being awakened to a different, I guess, mindfulness about work and what work means and what's important to our workforces. What are you hearing about the individuals that are now starting their own businesses? Um, maybe not necessarily because they originally thought that that's what they wanted to do, but sort of because that they're not happy where they were. So it's more of a reaction to being unhappy to start the business than a purposeful, it's time for me to start a business. What can we do to help employers think about what's going on in their employees' minds, not just about what the um, fulfillment is, but what is it that sort of the life coaching side of things that you would probably see uh, from your perspective that's going on? Yeah, I would, have, I would have the employers, the managers, whoever, just communicate with them, ask them how they're doing, ask them what they like about things, what they would like to see changed. I think communication is the key to everything. And they have, they've actually found, and I'm sure you know this, that it's proven that employees, money isn't the reason they do the job. It's the, it's the other things that go along with it. So if you can provide them with something that they, they like to do, like, like even be able to work from home. If they like to be able to work from home, provide that. Just communicate with them and see what it is that they enjoy doing with the different aspects of their job and just enhance that side of things. So communication is, is really the key to everything. Um, you bring up a good point. So now that, now that COVID has come, are you seeing changes to the way people define their success? You know, a lot of people success to them is that they're they're here and they're able to pay their bills um, and to other people's success is something bigger than that, um, being able to to be happy and um, and to move forward and grow. So don't wait for something big to happen to celebrate, celebrate every single step that you take. And that just reinforces the the good feelings and the good attitudes and and keeps you in that place of seeing more good yeah uh, agreed are you hearing people coming in and saying that oh before covid i thought this this is what my success was going to look like but now after covid i think this is what success should be or this is how i'm viewing success now i'm trying to sort of see a bridge what was pre-covid and post-covid the world is changing and i, I, yes. I and i look at like my peers and I see a lot of people doing a lot of self-reflection that they had not done before. And what is meaning of life? Things that sort of happen much later in life. Like now I need purpose. Like I've achieved monetary wealth or I've achieved whatever my definitions of success were before, but now that I'm older, now I'm, now I need different kinds of meaning, but I feel like these things are now happening much, much sooner in, in the lower age groups because of this pandemic. Yeah, I think people are finding ways to enjoy themselves and enjoy things. Whereas before people were thinking, well, um, it's Monday, I have to go to work and they look forward to Friday. Or um, I'm getting to be this certain age, I have 10 years left to work. And they're, they're finding um, kind of simple joys in little things so that they don't have to, um, think about when is Friday going to get here? When am I able to retire? Because they're starting to look at things differently and seeing, seeing the joy in things. And, and I think that's one thing that 
maybe that's what part of this post-traumatic growth is about, is being in the trauma and surviving it and getting through it. It's kind of gives you this, the satisfaction of knowing that you could, you can accomplish a lot more than you mm. thought you could because you went through this. So I think a lot of people are in that position of saying, you know, I made it through this, I can do just about anything. So it sort of opens their eyes up to possibilities. Yeah, I, I think you're very right about that. It's sort of like that, that old ism that, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? So now that we've been absent of a lot of activities that we had taken for granted for so long, um, having them taken away sorts of put them on the forefront of what, what we achieve. We're putting them off less and less. We're saying we want them now and mm -hmm. we're willing to sacrifice maybe some of the work time or whatever the monetary gains from work are, right? What would you like to impart or um, if people are struggling now, what, what would you like to say is uh, what, what should they be grasping onto for at least a lifeline to start off with to pull themselves out of whatever rut that they're in? Yeah, again, I would just have them um, have people create their success list, create what they find pleasure in, um, and just do more of that. Mm. Um, and if anybody wants to talk to me further about this, then, uh, you know, they can feel free to, to contact me. And um, if there's anything specific that they would like a little bit of extra help with that, you know, that would be great. Mm. Um this is fantastic. For closing us out, is there a, um, a person, a book, or something that you would recommend that um, it's not about the self-help, but sort of encompasses a great way to start um, gaining personal insight? Actually, I just looked down at my desk and I have um, Will Smith's new book out, Will Ooh. Smith's autobiography. That's a, a great, that's a great book. And he really, he, he really planned out and, and had support in his life. So um, I, I trust in, in things showing up the way they're supposed to. I look down and I see the Will Smith book. So I would encourage you to, to buy that book. The, um, it's called Will okay. uh, and read that. And there are so many stories and anecdotes and, and things that he went through. So um, I, I know I, I was going to, you know, do the typical think and grow rich stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think Will is much better for for these times. Yeah. So I would I would get a copy of the book Will and and read that and just see how he um, how he went about his challenges and moved through his challenges. Excellent, thank you. So. To close this out, why don't you tell us how people can get in touch with you um, best? Yeah, um, I have uh, LinkedIn. I have uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, if anybody wants to have a conversation with me, you can go to lynntranchell.com slash success and make an appointment with me. And we can talk about uh, where you may be stuck, how I might be able to help you or whatever uh, I can do to help you move forward in your business and your life so that you have a life you love and a business you love without sacrificing anything. That's great. It's, uh, it reminds me of um, the great saying that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will arrive, right? Yes, I believe that too, definitely. <laughs> Um, and if you want to learn what we do here at SLC Advisory Group, you can visit us at www.slcadvisorygroup.com. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our content, hit the subscribe button and we'll let you know when our next episode comes out. Um, thank you very much, Lynn. This has been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. This was fun. I love, I love talking about this kind of stuff.